Welcome to the Metal Voice. Oh boy, first time in person. The Blitz, Bobby Blitz. Overkill, Bobby. Bobby Blitz and Bobby De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the bus with Armored Saint, and the thing was, hey, it's Robert De Niro. And I go, it's Robert De Niro, and uh, who does uh, John Bush look like? Um, Die Hard. Oh, uh, oh God, he's, uh, I know, Demi Moore's, um, Oh gosh, why is it escaping my... Bruce Willis. Yes, Bruce Willis. thank you. Thank you, Bruce so Willis. Bruce Willis and Dem uh, Pulp Robin Fiction. That's it. Bruce Willis, That's Demi right. Moore. All right, first things first. Okay. King Diamond, Overkill, Night Demon. How did you get on this tour? What, what was it all about? Oh shit, we got... Uh, we did that South American uh, thing back in April, and it was... I mean, like on day one, the buzz happened. Uh, we're booked by TKO. Uh, Didi was actually rehabbing. We had, and still is to some degree. He was here yesterday, but he had to go home uh, for the Montreal show. But uh, the buzz came on day two. We're in Mexico doing a festival, Biohazard, Death Angel, and, 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 and all the, it seemed like I had all the thrash and, you know, relevant hardcore and thrash bands of that level together uh, at a festival in Mexico City. So it was, um, let's say, April 14th, the buzz happened. Mm. And we were like, Pursue, pursue, pursue. So TKO finally got it. They worked it out, ironed it out. I've known Kang like he's, you know, for for years. I mean, we're we're acquaintances. We're obviously don't, we don't send each other Christmas cards. I don't think he celebrates well, anyway. Well, maybe Halloween, <laughs> Halloween cards, perhaps Halloween cards. Right, but he's uh, I mean he's a great dude, sweet guy. Uh, you know, forthcoming. Uh, you know, always, uh, always seems to be helpful. As is a crew. I mean, it's a killer tour so far. I, I love King Diamond. I think I, again. I told you, I met him. One of the. He didn't have to talk to me, but he ended up talking to me for like ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like the way he hovers off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend said, "Do you think he could banish somebody from the kingdom for me?" <laughs> no, but it's great to have. And that's just a couple little side jokes. But it's uh, he's great to be on the road with. And, uh, do you think this is a cross genre, like a cross pollination of your the thrash, hard thrash fans, and sort of the power metal, King Diamond, black metal fans? Well, sure, we have you know we have elements, and it's really not black metal. I mean, it's the yeah, themes I mean, are black metal. Back at the end of the day, it was black metal, but I mean, then that word some, got changed. Right? This is some great heavy metal. I mean, and a great band with Andy LaRock and Matt Thompson and oh, Mike Weed, guys. Pontus. Yeah, I mean, it's a great fucking band, you know. So I mean the the idea is that it's it's theatrical, it's performance art, but it's it it, it contains let's say that heavy metal root within it. Absolutely. So that's where the, yeah. the commonality becomes. Listen, we contain we're a thrash band that let's say that they're a performance art theatrical band, but we both come from like the heavy metal core, you know, and and I think that that's where the the commonality is that we're still different. I think it's genius to put two different kind of bands together. Me too. As opposed to, because you're, you're really drawn from this like, oh, end over kill, we're going, you know? Um, or or the, the King fans that are big metal fans go, end over kill, we're going, you know? So, good deal. What a, what a perfect matchup. I was so excited when the tour was announced. Prior to this tour being announced, I go, in our last interview on Zoom, I go, when are you coming to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> We're not coming. <laughs> Taxes are too high. Too We're cold. not coming. <laughs> All right. I wore my battle vest shirt here today. This is my virgin battle vest shirt, but I only put one pin. It's Iron Maiden Killers. Okay. Paul Deanna recently passed away. He did. Um, I know that that was your influence, or at least one of those album influences that influenced you back in the day. Oh, sure. We were, we were actually doing a lot of, um, you know, we were doing covers off Iron Maiden and off Killers. We were a cover band prior to being Overkill, the original band. Um, so when those records came out, we were, I guess we're starting to thrive as a cover band. So I'm pretty sure we know, geez, 80% of each record, you know. And, and Deanna was, you know, he was kind of that voice that stepped out, you know, beyond um, so many different things. He was really influential, especially for the thrash guys like myself, because, you know, I had like the Bon Scott kind of a vibe going on. But then you had, you know, also like Johnny Rotten and I like Joey Ramone. You know what I mean? Like Stiff Baders from the Dead Boys had that punk thing. And Deanna was a, you know, a great combination or a great package of both that punk rock versus the new wave of British heavy metal. I know Didi you just referred to before that he had, you know, he's coming, he's on and off the tour. He's got that shoulder problem. Yeah. But what's it like with the, you know, working with a new drummer and a new bassist temporary? But Didi's been throwing the curveball for so long. You know, that he's yeah, torn that cuff. He's actually got both of them torn now. Yeah, this yeah. one is torn twice. It hurts. And then this one is still torn. Um, 
but he he feels best when he's playing first and foremost. Yeah. yeah to yeah. play with new people, um, I think it's the quality of the person that matters. You know, right. I, I mean, if we've been around for this long and they have, you know, they understand the presence we have, like Christian does. And Jeremy used to work for us before. I mean, Jeremy's not like far into this bus. And fitting in with uh, his personality to the other personalities in this band. We want it easy. We want it light. We want to have a good time. We want to play with talented dudes. Jeremy was Ron Lipnicki's guy all the way, like, you know, just after Ironbound. So he spent five, six years with us in those records. So he knows how this machine runs. He knows where it gets oiled, where it needs a little grease. So he's like a perfect choice. And I remember taking my girl down to... Uh, place in Jersey after Tony Dolan had wrecked that van that they're in. Like, Venom Inc. Yeah, the, the Venom Inc. show. And Jeremy was playing with Venom Inc. And I said, let's go see Jeremy, you know? You know, because I, I remember they were like, hey, we're going to be broke. I'm like, we'll just buy a bunch of t-shirts. <laughs> you know, it's not fucking contributing out here so everybody knows that we're good fucking people and we're going to heaven. We'll just give it to the merch guy. But in any case, um, I was sitting there going, boy, Jeremy's come a long fucking way. That motherfucker could play an overkill if we ever have any problems. And Randy goes, you sent that all the way back in November of 23. And it was like, yeah. I mean, he's, we thought he was that good. Christian, uh, the next uh, piece of this puzzle. Uh, one of the things that's so attractive about him, uh, ability uh, aside, understanding music aside, is just very simply this picking technique. We used a guy over in Europe who's a finger player, uh, Speezy from Creator. Okay. And it's a whole different vibe for us because there's no, it's, there's so much less attack with many finger players. Some finger players can get attacked. But Christian is just a machine with the right hand. It's almost like hearing a second guitar. It's so locked up with the guitar. It's filling, or third guitar, actually yeah. filling out that whole vibe. So he's a real natural... Uh, fill in. It's not a matter of anything except figuring out the songs because his style, his technique, his articulation with his right hand is is something that overkill songs crave uh, to make them thrive. Sure, and so sure. he's, he's that dude. Are we in the era of replacement musicians or artists? Like bands, we're getting older. Right, we're all getting older, and and slowly the parts are all getting older. And oh my ass! My, <laughs> I, I, you know, and just like Dee Dee, I mean, it, it's, it's a natural thing, right? You get you get older, you have more problems. Are we in this era for all metal musicians and artists and bands that we're going to start replacing everyone? Well, you know something. I, let's just before we go into that. For, yes, <laughs> but before we go into that. Um, there's certain people you can't replace. I mean, you couldn't send the King Diamond thing out without King, right? No, no, no. I mean, it's just not possible to do. No, no. Um, but I think that don't blame it on replacement or age. Blame it on the fact that it's... It, it, the, the beauty of it is that it's a non-disposable genre of music. It never gets thrown away like pop and continuously right, evolves right, into something right. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. It's loved multi-generational across the board. You know, there's grandfathers and granddaughters who are yeah. both in the King Diamond. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. mean, and that right there should should give you the, you know, make you, you feel prouder than saying, hey, we're all aging, we're breaking down, we're all... No, we're, we're not old, broken-down cars. We're fucking classic cars. <laughs> it's totally different. I got a 396 Chevelle. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It, it's, it, it's a sign. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, what about... I get a lot of this. Every time I mention punk on the website or in the social media, a lot of metalheads are like, punk, you know, that's not real music. But the reality is, a lot of punk... I'm going to ask you this question. A lot of punk has been influential into thrash and speed, right? Sure. And yeah. what's your take on that? Well, sure. I mean, you know, when we were a cover band, we were talking about the Siren Maiden stuff and ha having a punk feel, we had, you know, we had done Dead Boys covers. We had thrown in a Sex Pistols cover here and there. Something that, you know, I think there was a, may have been a Damned cover. Um, and we just loved the balance of the two. Like, if you took Diamond Head and you took the Dead Boys, you th mixed them up in a bag, you'd probably get something like Overkill. You know what I mean? And that's, it might not be the musicality as much as it is the attitude that it is, you know, that becomes the vehicle to deliver the music, mm -hmm. you know? Because, you know, even when the hardcore scene came around, they were like, hey, we came from punk. It started melting into the metal scene because the metal musicians were originally better musicians than the hardcore guys. That's right. And the metal guys wanted the hardcore delivery 
of stuff. And together you ended up with one kind of scene with some fringe around it. And I, you know, I think it's just kind of interesting that, again, that's another genre that's hard to throw away. So you'll see AF out there, and, you know, or John Joseph, or, you know, the, you know this kind of stuff. Um, so, so I think that, that punk is the delivery, and it's the attitude, and maybe part of the heart of it. You know, it's maybe it's the never grow up attitude, and the metal side of it is the, you know, let's try to evolve our talent and become become better, and then this will this will solidify itself with that generational quality. I always thought that thrash would is always metal at its purest form, in a sense, because it never changes. It's always staying more or less the same. Yeah. Not to say it doesn't go out of the box a little bit, but it always it's the purest form of metal, like thrash metal that is. It's a, it's a little unique, you know, I, I always thought when people ask me about, you know, doing this for a long time and the purity of thrash and blah, 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 I said, you know, when I was writing lyrics, I mean, I came out of college, I was taking Shakespeare, I was taking some writing courses, and, you know, I have a little bit of background with regard to education, and, you know, and I used all that into them, which is what you're not supposed to do when it comes to this shit. You're supposed to be just fucking angry and you're going to kill everybody, you know? Now I'm like, my anger is, you kids get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I am, those clowns. <laughs> but I think there's, I think there's something purity about the whole art form to be able to take it to, you know. I mean, I love seeing a young man come in and take it over. You know that somebody should come in and kick the old dudes right out and fucking grab the flag. And it's happening for sure. I mean, there's, you know, over the last decade and a half or so, or so, you see Gojira, you see other things, you know, see other brands of heavy music that are just fantastic in a pure sense. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I applaud that. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think it's, I think it's metal in its purest form. It's angst. It's musicianship. It's, uh, That's right. you know, it's, it's all the elements that make it up. There's, we're, it's where hair metal sort of watered in it down. That anger, that uh, angst, that rebellious sort of attitude. Thrash has kept the rebellion alive. We're steak and potatoes. They are potato baked, baked potato loaded. Creme brulee. With everything. Creme brulee. Creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Sure. All right, new music. Okay, now it's been, Scorch has been around a year? Um, it was released the same day as Metallica record, which was 22, right? Was it 22? 23. 23. April 23. Four, 14th. Four, 14. April, April 14th, 2023. Great album, but it's been a while now. Are you just are, are the ideas going back and forth with the band, thinking about lyrics, thinking about you know some new music? Well, I think it's necessary to get Vernie in the you know in the right headspace. I think that this rehab is getting him there. You know, the only time this dude doesn't have pain is when he's playing. So yeah. it's like he's so happy to be out here, and the guy loves playing shows. I mean, he, he's not some dude trying to sneak out the back door. He's no, flying no, into no, the big yeah. ones. You know, he's like, I want to fuck, I want that fucking show, which is that attitude you had when you were a kid. Thrash. Yeah, it's a thrash thing, right? Um, so we kind of cut a plan, and we said, why don't we end the year like this? We have Jeremy. Um, we'll get fill-ins when you need. He's going to fly out for a bunch more shows. He's been out on two joints so far. And I would think 25 um, is a, you know, a demo. It's done by, by March, and we're recorded and delivered somewhere by, you know, when it's ready, I guess. You know, I don't want to start thinking that we have all these plans for the future, but for Christ's sake, we got to be, you know, we got to be fucking realistic. We're coming down the back of the mountain. In a good way. I mean, listen, in a good fucking way. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, at the top of the mountain. You're you're maintaining that. (laughs) Wait, (laughs) what? A little push. So, Um, what do you what do you think? You're thinking another year? uh, What do you think about new album, new music? uh, I would think uh, a release in 26. That's what I would think. Yeah, I mean, I can't I can't be more specific than that. But I mean, we want a tour. We've already talked about other bands to take through Europe and. You know, I love doing this kind of stuff. I mean, you work like an hour a day, you know, and then it's like, you know, run around the fucking world with people you love. And You know, you know I, I, I'm so happy you're here after so many years in Montreal, Canada. Bobby Blitz, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, everybody, you gotta go check him out on tour. A must. My name is Bobby Blitz and I approve the fucking metal voice. <laughs>